Hi there and welcome to the video. In this video I'm going to be reviewing the Sonoff TRV Smart Radiator Valve. Now these apparently are very popular in winter for good reason because that's when you use your radiators the most. Uh, so in this video I'm going to be unboxing it, uh, installing it, getting it working with Home Assistant and with the eWe Link app. So let's get on with it. Right, so you can buy the Sonoff Zigbee thermostatic radiator valve direct from uh, the Sonoff website. It's itead, I-T-E-A-D dot C-C is the website. And if you're interested in buying it, then I have got a discount code for you so you can get money off uh, your purchase. And the code to use for that is Daniel RC15 Sonoff. So D A N I E L R C 1 5 S O N O F F. That gets you 10% off, by the way. Um, and I'll put that link in the uh, video description below as well. So if you do want to buy one of these, you do need a Zigbee hub to make it work. Uh, you could use the ZB dongle, like I do with my Home Assistant on my Raspberry Pi. Or you could use the ZB Bridge Pro, which I have as well. Uh, and I should be showing you me using that soon, or the iHost, the NS Panel Pro, or if you've got a newer ALEXA from Amazon, then you can use that as well because that has a built in Zigbee hub. So here we have the Sonoff TRV or thermostatic radiator valve. Let's do a quick unboxing and then we'll get on with setting it up. So, what do you get inside the box? So you get the radiator valve itself, and then you get loads of adapters in here as well, and some manuals. Let's just have a quick look at this. I've already got batteries in it. Um, so really what we've got on here is we've got a dial that you turn to give your readings. You can see it's saying 19 at there a minute, and it's got a signal on there as well. Um, and then it's just a bracket on the end. Basically it's a motor that pushes the pin on your radiator valve in and out. Um, so you turn the uh, temperature dial like that and you've got a press um, button as well. You can set it to off. You can set it all the way up to 35. Okay, so the sleeve slides off, button here, and then pull it back. And then really what you've got is I've got three batteries in here, all different of course. Um, and then you've got uh, the readout that you can see here, which is how it comes through. And that's basically it. So if you need to change the batteries, which at some point you will, three double A's in here. And then you just put the sleeve back over and line it up on there with that catch. Uh, with the white bit there. And that's that. So what else do you get inside? Well, it's all about the adapters really, because... You have no idea, or Sonoff don't have any idea about what sort of uh, radiators you have in your house. So they supply you with a whole range of adapters. And there's a packet. Um, there is a really good document uh, on Sonoff website, and I'm showing you now, that shows you where or which um, adapter to use, depending on which uh, make a valve you have on your radiator. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description actually, um, just so you can find it. But here are the plastic adapters. Um, so there's loads of different types. You also get a metal bolt and thread in here for this one as well. This is the one I actually use um, for the Danfoss. Uh, the others I did not use, but you may use them. So there are a number of them in here with pegs and pins as well. So as I say, just look in the document and find out which one you kind of need to use. Uh, also in the box, uh, we have the usual kind of instruction manuals and things as well. So there's a little bit, there's an instruction QR code on here uh, and the usual kind of uh, instruction manual that you get uh, with Sonoff products. And that's it. So let's get on and let's get it installed. 
Right, so in the background you can see I've already fitted it, but uh, I just wanted to show you the Danfoss TRV. It's very simple. Um, basically it's spring loaded on these ones. So you set it to like full uh, number five and then you can kind of turn the end and it's kind of spring loaded and it should then come away from the end of the valve. It's quite easy actually to get on and off once you kind of know what you're doing. You just kind of twist the end. Right, so if you actually put it on like this, it will error. Okay, if you've got a gap at the back end, like I have there, and you screw the adapter on, then you'll get like an F5 when it's trying to initiate. That's what I was getting, and I couldn't work out why, and it's because that kind of sleeve, that adapter needs to be on all the way to the end. How you want to have it on is just like this. So really nice and flush right to the back, um, and then basically put the screw and the bolt kind of thing through, and then put your batteries in first before you start screwing the bracket on. Uh, you can take the cover off as I have here, or you can slide the cover back on before you start screwing it on. It's up to you. So just get it onto the end uh, and then screw it onto the adapter. Uh, remembering that you probably want the readout of either facing you really or sort of upwards. And you can always twist it a little bit uh, when you're finished. So just kind of finger tight on the threads really on the end and it should go on pretty nicely. So the next thing we need to do is calibrate it. Now to do that, you need to press the end button in for five seconds. Uh, and it will flash up with add. And then basically what it's gonna do is gonna move the pin sort of in and out. It's gonna calibrate it so it knows the minimum and maximum movement it can make. And then afterwards you should see like the number 19 come up on the readout. Right, so the next job, uh, in this example, we're gonna use the Sonoff um, hub. So I'm just gonna power that on, turn that on, because I don't use that usually. Uh, and then what we need to do is we need to rotate the dial to the off position, and then we need to hold and press the end in for a number of seconds until you see this. And then it's time to get your uh, Ewe Link app going and go into your ZB Bridge Pro as I've done here and then add. And then what should happen is that it should find the device. And that's found it. So the TRZ ZB. So then you can go into that and this is the screen you'll get. So you've got the kind of status. Obviously, I've left it in the off position while I was kind of pairing it. And then you'll get the temperature uh, and you'll get your battery level on there as well. And then you can set the temperature by plus and minus on the screen. If you click on the manual link, it's got manual or auto or off for frost protection. You've got smart scheduling, so you can set all that up as well or delete some uh, timings or add intervals or whatever you want. Got stats on there as well, which should hold the stats. You can download your stats as well uh, for six months. You've got hourly, daily and monthly as well. Uh, and then into the options, I'm on the latest version, which currently was 121 in early 2025. Uh, we've got energy forecasting, but that's only available in the French region, apparently. So coming back out of that, uh, we've got loads of different third party platforms that you can use this with. So we've got temperature calibration. If you want to sort of calibrate the unit with what you really think the room temperature is. Uh, we've got child lock on there and we've got valve opening percentages as well and the frost protection uh, and you can actually get the, um, this, the temperature from the external unit of an external sensor which i already have some of those uh, son off uh, temperature and humidity sensors as well so all in all the app looks pretty good if you're going to use it with a, a zigbee bridge then I would probably recommend using the Ewe Link app with this. So now I just wanted to show you how quickly uh, the temperature kind of changes between the app 
and the unit itself. So it kind of updates it. There you go, it's just updated it now. So there is a little bit of a lag between the two things, depending on which way you go, really. So that's gone down to 19, and then hopefully we'll see an update. There you go, it's updated it now. And you can do the same thing, obviously, on the app as well. Go the other way around with the pluses and minuses. So if I up that to, say, 21, 22, it's then kind of going to refresh and should then set um, the radiator valve up to that setting as well. But it won't kind of flash and show it on screen. It just would have done it in the background, um, to be honest. But if you kind of wiggle the radiator valve, then it should show the temperature. and go, it's updated on the app. So now if we have a look at it on the front there, there you go, 23 before I moved it. So it does update it. It just doesn't kind of show you that it's kind of done it if the uh, screen is off on the actual TRV itself. Right, so you might have seen before, as soon as I added it to the Zigbee Hub, it kind of flashed up that uh, Amazon could see it as well. So I've just come straight into that and found it on the home screen. So I've now added it uh, into the bedroom group and you can obviously tell it to be rename it and tell it to change the temperature so there it is i click into it and what you get is you get the same sort of thing you get the temperature um and then you can get the mode as well which is auto heating or off i can show you the current temperature as well and obviously you can do smart routines and things like that within the amazon app as well and create routines etc Right, so I'm in Home Assistant now. Uh, I'm using uh, Zigbee to MQTT. Uh, now this, I'm gonna just click on so I can uh, add items. And then what's gonna happen is if I kind of set it up again, so I turn it to off, rotate it to off on the valve and then hold it down. Obviously I'm not using the, I can't use the bridge at the same time, Zigbee bridge, so I've basically unplugged that and now we should find that it will come into Home Assistant. Here we go. It's found the device. We scroll to the bottom, we can see it being added. And then hopefully that red Z will turn into the image. There you go. It's found it. And I can see underneath there, once they disappear, that the uh, image has changed to the radiator valve on number 23. And if we go into that, uh, we can sort of change the names and things like that of it and just get a few details. You go battery power 64%. And we can look at what it exposes. So we can see the heating set points, the local temperature, uh, the calibration, system mode, uh, whether it's running or not, the battery percentage, the child lock on, if the open window is on or not, frost protection setting. And then you can see all the steps as well, because obviously it's just a motor opening and sort of closing the valve. Um, we've got voltages in there as well for the limits and the opening degrees and the closing degrees as well. And then of course, scheduling as well is all listed in here. They're all exposed. And of course the link quality at the end, how good the signal is, is all there to be used within kind of Home Assistant. So let's add it into a dashboard. So we're on this little sensor screen where I've got my two other Sonoff door sensors. So from here, I'm basically just gonna add a card. I'm gonna edit the dashboard and add a card. Ah, thermostat, that's the one I want. So I'm gonna choose that. And it's already chosen the entity name, which you could have changed that. I'm just gonna give it um, a TRV name. And that's all I'm really going to do on this one. So then I'm just going to save that. And there it is on my dashboard. And I have to say done. And that's what it looks like. It looks quite nice, actually. It's, you can obviously move it around with your finger um, or actually drill down into it like I have there. And use the plus and minus and also set the uh, mode as well. You've got the current temperature and the temperature that you kind of want. So moving it up and down is quite easy. There you go, it's now set it to heating because we've gone past that limit. And 
now it's gone idle because I've gone lower. Right, to sum up then, what do I think of the Sonoff TR Viva smart valves? Well, I think they are very good. Uh, and I would buy more, to be honest. Um, I like the idea of being able to lock them down um, and from with a child protection sort of thing and being able to set your temperature remotely and things like that, especially in radiators where they're hard to get to. And I'll certainly be setting this one up uh, in the office because my desk is kind of in front of my radiator uh, and it's very hard to get to. Hopefully the install will be okay. Um, but yeah, I shall set this one up there and see how it goes. Hopefully the batteries, three batteries in here, hopefully they'll last quite a while as well. I don't want to be replacing those too often. Um, but it's good also that it integrates with other external uh, thermometers like the Sonoff uh, humidity and temperature sensors I've got. I've got one in the wall here as well in the office. Um, so that's good for that. Yeah, I quite like them. I like the readout. It looks The readout looks quite smart on them as well. Although I won't probably see that because it's, as I say, the radio I'm going to use it on is behind my desk. Um, there were a few issues kind of getting it working with the correct adapter, but obviously, hopefully your house has all the same radiators in it. So once you've learned how to do one, uh, if you're going to add more, they should be really straightforward and quick to fit. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a like. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And of course, leave any comments you want down below. Thanks very much and I'll see you soon.